We are continuing the exploration of the Audio Nirvana drivers and we are looking at the 8 inch uh, W classic uh, Audio Nirvana drivers uh, specifications and uh, I am going to talk a little by, bit about the Fletcher Munson curve and that's the uh, basically the, the sensitivity curve of the human hearing of our ears so basically when you look at that the most important thing to know is that the region between 2 kilohertz and 5 kilohertz this is where our hearing is the most sensitive so if this in this region we hear at an alarmingly higher sensitivity than in any other region so it means that if this region has even a, a few dBs higher output than, than flat, then we will hear it uh, very keenly and we will hear it as, as a very uh, distinct change to the sound quality. And, and usually for uh, single ended, I mean, uh, single driver solutions where you have a, a full range loudspeaker or, or just one loudspeaker trying to cover the entire frequency range, this is usually the problem child. 2 to 5 kilohertz because it tends to peak, it tends to beam. Everyone heard of the louder shout that that is primarily caused by that region being overrepresented. And that's partially the problem of the whizzer cone. And um, and then here Audio Nirvana they 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 did a lot of work, a lot of research on uh, on, on their classic series because here they got rid of the wizard cone and they used the, the dome instead uh, to give the high frequency extension and that resulted in a much smoother integration uh, of the 2 to 5 kilohertz range but uh, and also I would say a much smoother integration in the 10 to 20k range and I think for for a full range driver this is very nice uh, it, it, it's a very nice curve and uh, the only thing, uh, thing that I'm, I'm really a little bit uh, more uh, concerned about is that 2 to 5 kilohertz range is, uh, has a quite a bit higher so this is like a, ve a big mountain, a big heap of extra energy we, we cannot really see well in this uh, poor quality scan uh, and in this uh, representation but it basically this is uh, this region two to five kilohertz region is like about five decibels higher in level compared to the hundred hertz to fifteen kilohertz region. So it means that where your hearing is most sensitive, that region will be popped out quite noticeably. So this has several side effects. One of the side effects is that uh, it will uh, tell your ear that the music material that you are listening to is uh, to, to make it appear as if it was play playing more quietly than what it is. So basically it's, uh, it's simulating a more uh, an emphasized drop-off of both the lower frequencies and both the higher frequencies, so it's exaggerating the fletcher Munson curve and, and, and makes your ears believe that we are about 5 dB quieter playing the music than, than what we are actually doing. And that's pretty nice because uh, you can uh, listen to it and, and not bother the people around you and then you will be able to enjoy it of course, when we listen uh, to a music quietly, the, the bass will not uh, dissolve the, uh, the walls around us, the highs will not drill a hole into our ear canal, but, uh, but it will, so this uh, solution will steal you a pretty enjoyable uh, low volume listening because of that extra 5 dB efficiency provided into that uh, most sensitive range which is i would say the at the focus of the brain when we're listening to small uh i mean not small but uh, uh, low volume music 
and if you want uh, a loudspeaker that you can play quietly then if this region 2 to 5k is it has, has a dip in it uh, that loudspeaker won't be able to do that so then you have to crank up the volume higher to make your brain think that you are listening to it at a low level but then both the bass and the high end will be just over represented so when we listen to it this will this driver will allow us to uh, listen quietly and and it will prefer you to play the music more quietly and now if we are cranking up the volume then the opposite is happening so when we are cranking up the volume uh, then uh, the mid-range is still uh, start to prop out and when we have uh, the, the 2 to 5k region and when we are in the, in the mid 90s mid 90 dB's efficiency when you have a plus 5 dB extra in a region then uh, that can be quite painful if you are listening to it at a loud level so the louder you go uh, any extra dB in the output in the high frequency range will count twice or three times as much as, 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 as what it is. And I would say here it, it's not too bad because it's not, not a uniformly uh, higher region, but we have like humps and dips, humps and dips. So, and then even here at the 10 kilohertz region, we have peaks and valleys. So, it's it's not a uniformly uh, over represented region so i would say this is a pretty nicely balanced driver and now when we look what happens below 100 hertz i am not commenting on any of that for any driver because that region will can have very different looks based on the circumstances how they test the drivers and and that and and how it looks like here has most likely very little to no resemblance on what you will find when you put it in the cabinet you want and when you put that cabinet in your room then how the room response will be in this region and how what we see here just forget about it uh, for example i mentioned the vas the equivalent volume size that is the big thing that we are determine this if you put it in a, a huge vast cabinet it will it will stay more up if you put it in a smaller cabinet it will start dropping earlier and earlier and earlier that's that's the only fact that you can count on and um, so now we have seen this and we have uh, looked at this is the their cheapest driver so this was the uh that that one the classic 8W ferrite and $300 a pair. I would say that that's phenomenally cheap. And, uh, and it looks like you are getting a very durable, really nice uh, quality um, driver that um, I, have, I, I think I can, I can recommend it for uh, playing around with this driver because it's, it's, it's going to get you, I think, a much, much better sound quality than what the price would suggest and uh, when i flipped through the website of audio nirvana they said they sold already thirty thousand pairs of their uh, drivers of all kinds and they had only 10 returns on thirty thousand. that's that's just amazing i i never saw any uh, such low returns happening and and in the case of this uh, 8 inch driver we see that uh, we have something that's very promising and uh, and actually uh, when when i looked at all of this data that they provided uh, uh, like the uh, eff even the efficiency although the, the efficiency what i measured here uh, is is lower so what i read from the charts uh, this should be like 100 and 203 db but it cannot be uh, so most likely this is by, uh, by a factor of 10 off and then we are getting most likely like 93 db efficiency so if you put it in a cabinet probably it will be 93 db that that's uh, my more realistic uh, guess out of it and and uh, and the fs value uh, 
impedance is perfect to to make it work with a single ended triodes and and i would say that all of these properties the qts value uh they this is perfect to use in a void pipe cabinet and and uh and also you can use it in a base reflex cabinet um in the base reflex cabinet you will uh, gain the ability that you will be you will have a, a far greater control over where you want to place them so in your room you can place uh, them much more freely than a void pipe of course if uh, your base reflex cabinet is ported in the rear that will put certain demands so you cannot put it close to the rear wall you have to move them away from the wall to have control over the base uh, if they are front ported, then you can push them uh, uh, more towards the wall. When you push them more towards the wall, then you get a deeper and a stronger base, but uh, less control over imaging. And uh, if you uh, do a void pipe application, uh, uh, I would suggest the void pipe application for those of you who are willing to play around a lot with the uh, loudspeaker placement and you have the ability to uh, to play around with it i would say that the optimal placement of uh, of void pipes will be similar to a rear ported base reflex cabinet so so just start with them uh, putting where you would put a rear ported base reflex cabinet and then uh, play around with fine-tuning the placement. For me, it took one year to find the perfect place of, for void pipes. And, and basically, after that, that year was not just uh, something that... Uh, and during that year, I, I never heard the full potential of my void pipes. It took me one year to realize what is their full potential. But, but once I learned uh, to, uh, to how to find their, their optimal placement, uh, it also means that you have graduated from the PhD of loudspeaker positioning, because the only way to do that is use your hearing. And, and now I can basically uh, take any pair of loudspeakers, uh, turn them on in a, any room, listen to them and, and just by hearing what I hear I can move them around and in 10 minutes I can find the optimal uh, position, optimal towing for them and, and that's it. And, and, and this is a skill that the void pipe will teach you and, but it's also a mandatory skill. So without that uh, ability uh, you will be able to enjoy probably I would say like... Uh, mm, 10% of their imaging capability and about 2% of their base output capability. And why is that that void pipes are so uh, finicky about uh, loudspeaker placement? And uh, I, I will talk about it in a little bit, but just going back to Igor's uh, email, that he has uh, a room which is dedicated to stereo, and it's uh, acoustically treated already, I would recommend for you to go for the void pipe. Because uh, with the void pipe, uh, I mean, when you have an acoustically well-controlled room and you have the freedom to toy around with loudspeaker placement, then you have the ideal room for a void pipe. And... Uh, and then and, and you can uh, look into the void pipes, uh, you can uh, touch base with Red Eye. he is also a subscriber on my channel, and he just recently commented that he has built uh, uh, void pipes for, for himself, he uses tank bank drivers, and he is tremendously enjoying them. And uh, I will, uh, in the near future, share about many different kinds of void pipes that I built for my friends and, and other experiences, and look through resources on the web about void pipes and go through all the what people think about it what what are the tricks what are the pitfalls and and where to steer because uh, when when i say void pipe it covers a, a, 
a mind-blowing range of uh, sound quality loudspeakers. It's kind of like, uh, uh, let me say, um, you can mention like any any car manufacturer. And if you say loud pipe, void pipe, it's just saying the car manufacturer's name. And you are not specifying whether it's their lowest end model that was made 30 years ago and it's on the way to the junkyard, that quality, or their uh, highest category, uh, most sought after model. So, so void pipes, yes, when you build two pairs, if you compare one to the other, one can sound like uh, the worst example of uh, a loudspeaker execution, and the other one can sound like the uh, the loudspeaker of your dreams. And when you hear people uh, commenting negatively, it's because they heard the bad examples, and when they are absolutely all over the moon, because they either heard the, or they built for themselves the good ones. And then going to talk about how to find the good ones and how to build it for yourself and uh, what the void pipe will do for you is it will give you this area of the output usable so where the base reflex cannot work anymore another choice is to build a, a true horn cabinet for that now that's I, I would recommend that only for masters in a uh, in loudspeaker design for those people to undertake that undertaking because it's extremely complex and uh, and it's beyond rare that you will uh, build something that is uh, even uh, remotely acceptable if you are a, a great grandmaster of horn design like uh, Bruce Edgar was uh, or uh, Paul Voigt was, or, or James B. Lansing was, or, or the folks work, working at Western Electric were, then yeah, you, you will uh, create amazing stuff. But uh, I, I just mentioned you guys these names, and apart from them, I don't know anyone who mastered uh, building uh, bass horns. So... So that's it. So basically, uh, you have virtually zero chance of uh, successfully building a bass horn. And the general uh, impression I got for, from people who build the loader horns for either loader drivers or other drivers is that they, they do work to a certain degree, but uh, people not, were not fully satisfied because the sound was uh, not as balanced as, as, as you would expect. So, so if you want to look into a really well-designed uh, bass horn, then look into Bruce Edgar's works. But I don't think uh, you will any or anyone will find uh, much detailed information to help you copy uh, that uh, his designs or cabinets. Uh, so, so the only thing that that really is left for us for a high efficiency full-range driver to use uh, that low uh, frequency to go to dig down to 30 hertz is the void pipe because that's what it can do so thank you for tuning in and uh, we will continue later or saga exploring the audio nirvana drivers so now i put a stop to the 8 inch uh, classic driver and we will start looking at the bigger brothers at the classic uh, uh, 10 inchers, uh, the both the ferrite magnet one and the alnico magnet one, and then we will look at the big guy, the heavy guy, the 12 inch guy, and see what's the difference, what are the advantages we are getting, and what are the compromises we have to make for them. So thank you for tuning in, please like, subscribe, bye bye.